today. And it's a good one. Josh Kerr up against Wiggly Dantas and Adam Melling. And it should be a fine battle. Josh Kerr, these conditions will suit him well. Loves to take to the air, a great little barrel rider. And obviously uh, for the waves, not massive out there at the moment. Josh will be able to fit into these smaller barrels quite well. Good finish to 2015. As we see Wiggly getting up early. Rocking a new mohawk for these last two events on the schedule. Lightning fast backhand. Ronnie Blakey joined by Ross Williams for this last heat of the day. Ross, this is a, a good way to finish. We've seen so, some great heats, just some great comparisons we've been able to draw throughout the day with, with different stories. and Very smart tube rider, so these conditions, I think, make him a pretty heavy favorite. Wiggly Dantes is extremely powerful. Um, he's known for pushing a lot of water around, uh, but that way you can see just dumped on him really quick, so only able to fit in the one maneuver. And then here's Josh Kerr. Again, lightning fast surfer. Just a couple of maneuvers for Josh, so getting the feet wet. Come pipeline, Wiggly is going to be a standout. And here he is again, keeping busy. Linking together some nice moves there. You talked about just his ability to displace water, and we'll get back to that in a moment, Ross, as we see Josh Kerr just getting a frontside snap wrong on what was a pretty decent looking wave. But what is it about Wiggly? Why is he able to, to move so much water? Is it all power? Uh, well, he's really strong, for sure. He's got some big legs on him. He does a lot of uh, jiu-jitsu training. You know, just beautiful timing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun to throw water around. Well, some movement at the moment with surfers splitting the peak. Josh Kerr takes to the air. But kind of projected forward rather than up into the sky. And as a result, didn't even bother finishing that one off. 23 and a half minutes to go. And Wiggly has the early lead, his previous wave of 5.33. That's gone missing a bit, so it'll be good to see him recapture it. Well, this is Josh Kerr with plenty of speed, and he takes to the air a huge alley-oop. But you can see this isn't like other beach breaks, where you might just find that nice fluffy landing pad. And Josh has got caught up trying to ride off the roof of that wave. One of the waves he likes to surf a lot is uh, DMJs over there in Santa... Or, sorry, in... Oceanside, as we see Adam Allen just get a, a little drain pit there, didn't let him out. Uh, and the wave is punchy and square, just like this one. So, uh, you know, he's used to going out there with his buddies on his jet ski and catching a million waves and punting. Uh, so he's going to like these kind of conditions. Josh Kerr, well, he also loves going to the air. He won some uh, air show events before graduating to the CT ranks as Wiggly Dantas gets up into the lip and let's go plenty of water like we were mentioning just moments ago impeccable timing and some strength in the lower body helping the Brazilian to just throw buckets on that ride two big turns you know the focus can go out the window it's been a long season as we see a split peak action here from Josh Kerr wow how's the height wow. on that reverse right there and you can see even Josh Kerr surprised himself he was really close to landing that alley-oop but he greased that one well, this is going to be a big score as Josh takes to the air once again. But a huge frontside air reverse. Through the stalefish grab in there too. Very difficult to do. We've only seen it in CT competition a handful of times. Did he get a stale grab in there? Pretty sure he got the stale in there. Wow. So uh, we'll see it again in slow-mo. It was quick watching it in real time. But a huge number dropping for Kerr. A 9.7. The judges loving the technical aspect. He splashes the water. He's back in this heat, he takes the lead. And let's have a look at the slow-mo here. Have a look for the stalefish grab. Clean pop right there. That was right what he was looking for, and you, you called it. He definitely got the stalefish grab in there and absolutely nailed the landing right in. You were talking earlier about how, you know, a lot of these landings out here, they're tricky because the wave is, is so boxy. A lot of times you're landing on the falls and you have to somehow manage to pull it off, but that one, was sugar-coated. A really puffy whitewash there to cushion a blow. It's that technical aspect on show. We see air reverses all the time, but the stale fish, it's hard to get to. And Josh absolutely nailed it. 9.7. If Josh Kerr is kind of slapping the water after landing a, an air, you know it's a special one because he lands so many of them. He's psyched. And that is a huge number. One turn, 9.7.
Well, you talk about getting that stale fish grab. If you're sitting at home on your couch, even just do it. You know, try and grab by your heels. As here we go, Josh, another one. And he goes to the alley oop this time. But again, just uh, can't find that little transition. He wants to get a decent backup score on the board. He would have watched Joel Parkinson earlier on today score a 9.5 in the opening stages of his round one effort. He ended up losing that heat to Brett Simpson. Backup score, but even if you're at home, you know, just grab like you're on a surfboard and pretend you're doing a stale fish grab. It's not the most natural thing to do. So that little technical effort there from Josh Kerr definitely, I think, made a difference in the judges' minds, and I'm glad that they picked up on it. Again, watch his right hand. Right under the rail there. That is not natural at all. It's very hard to get to. Josh, one of the smaller guys, you know, definitely showing some flexibility. And the wherewithal to actually get that technical grab in while he's in the air, that just shows you the reps, the comfort, you know, having that connection with skateboarding to uh, go ahead and pull that off. And he's been skateboarding right throughout the European leg. He's traveling with his stepson, Colin, and Colin is a, a really keen skater. Loves, Loves it. it. So they've been hitting a lot of the skate parks around Portugal just these last couple of days. So Josh uh, just dialed in to get above the lip and uh, he smashed that one out of the park. The heats, um, you, you took down Mick Fanning and, and you're going out into a heat like that against guys like John John and, and CJ, you know, world champion. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like it's phasing you. You've gotten a, an amazing sense of confidence going right now. Yeah, no, for sure. You just got to um, always be believe in yourself and I've been doing it a long time and um, yeah, I know what it, what it takes to, um, to get that form and yeah, confidence is the biggest one. Bring that form, that rhythm that he had in France down here to Portugal and gets the round one victory. And Adam Melling picking off a wave there. Just over 16 minutes to go. And once Josh Kerr finds a decent backup score, it's going to be very hard for Adam Melling and Wiggly Dantas. Nick? They do some big errors. So it'd be kind of cool to see him force that issue as we see Josh Kerr. And again, just a, a, another little grab there for that front side error, but not as big as he wanted. Uh, but uh, he had a wave just after that where he got a couple of man maneuvers together. So uh, he's definitely on the hunt. I would give you a hug if I did that air just now. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, Adam Melling now. Trying to get himself back into the heat, pushing hard on that first turn. And as a result, he skips out. 15 minutes remaining. Yeah, Wiggly Dantes, I have seen him boost some big airs. So I, I, I'd be stoked to see him look for a ramp and, and show us what he's got. But... He knows where his bread and butter is. He's going to be looking to take out the fire hose. And here goes Wiggly now, driving up into the pocket. Decent first turn. Bashes away it again. Only needs a 5.97 at this stage to get into the lead. But he'll need more. Turned eight just yet, but the last time I saw her skateboarding, I was completely blown away. And here goes Pops. Josh Kerr looking for a decent backup number. Finds a couple of moves on this ride, but no major turns. Well, a nice set wave, though, and he, he strung together some quick surfing, and that's what it's all about. You have to be cat-like with the reflexes without, you know, how quick these waves, they're, you know, so punchy on that shallow sand. So I think he'll definitely get rid of that 3.4. Well, Josh has had some decent results here in the past. In fact, the last three years, he's made the finals here in Portugal. As we see a replay of that last ride. I like this angle. This is uh, our cameraman sitting on the sandbar here. So you get a, a bird's eye view of Josh Kerr. You can see how shallow it is. So again, absolutely charges and big waves. So he'd be a threat at pipe as well. Well, here's Adam Melling from that sandbar perspective. Just working this wave over, looking to really find some clean combos as he brings this one through to the inside and just bashes. Whatever was left of that wave, just a ripple on the inside, and he just uses all that fitness, all that power, and unloads a pretty tidy little snap. Fourth in the rankings, he desperately needs a big result to pop back in the top 22. That's the cutoff line at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, now that we're in the last two events, these surfers are bettering their results. They get to throw away their worst two. So all these surfers are really trying to get rid of those 25ths and 13ths. I'm in the mix, and here we go, Josh. Adam Melling Adam. picks off one without priority, gets some cover, throws it up there for the finish. But I don't think it's going to uh, help Melling's campaign at all in this heat. Just over seven minutes to go. His best wave is a 4.77. And he needs a 
Nice read there from Adam, tucking right behind the wedge right there, uh, and got a nice little barrel. But again, being that it's low tide, there's not a ton of ton in of this heat to get the lead. A 9.7 for this one, Ross Williams. Again, the pop so clean. I love the height. You know, he got so high above the lip line there. Uh, so you know, of course, the technical aspect of it, the right hand under his right heel, that is tough to do. It's not comfortable. It's an awkward thing to do. But Josh made it look really stylish. He made it look easy. Josh has. You know, such a skateboarder's approach to his aerial surfing too. He doesn't hold the grab too long. He doesn't safety it. He let go after getting the clean grab and almost kind of tweaked his board out a little bit. Mm. There. There's been some fantastic additions in uh, the Euro leg, but here we go. Wiggly Dantas, he's chasing a 7.24. And he has just bashed the lip repetitively on this wave. He likes it there there's been some fantastic additions in uh, the euro leg but here we go wiggly dantas he's chasing a 7.24 and he has just bashed the lip repetitively on this wave he likes it a little giddy up claim right there i like that one <laughs> what are your thoughts he, uh, right now wiggly dantas 7.24 I, I want to watch the replay again. I really like those maneuvers uh, when the wave had some size. But once that wave dropped below knee high, it's kind of tough to get those big scores. Right there, nice quick snap. Again, another trigger. All these turns are trigger related. He's really looking to throw a ton of water to the sky. So those first two turns were on the money. But see, that you know the wave is really small at that point. So I don't know how much uh, you know weight they'll give in that third turn. Uh, this is Josh having a look at this one, but Wiggly. He's going to pick off the end of this ride. A couple of nice turns. One minute remaining. As we see in the tube. Trying to find an exit. It was Adam Melling. And he's frustrated. 50 seconds remaining. Josh Kerr holding on to the lead and priority now. Somewhere in the mix, Ronnie. Uh, Josh Kerr found himself a 6.27. Just 20 seconds remaining. Josh getting the job done a 9.7 with what some of our WSL commentary Terry team are calling the aerial of the year so looking forward to uh, hearing them break it down as we see Adam Melling pulling into a nice looking barrel in the final stages but he didn't find the exit the heat is over and it is gonna be Josh Kerr powering his way through to round three, Wiggly Dantas and Adam Melling will have to fight their way through round number two. So many highlights from today to check out in the post show.